with no further ado, Delegate Alex Simons, I will let you kick it off. Thanks. Good afternoon. I want to thank everyone for being on this call. Uh, this is such an important issue for the state of Virginia. I stand by the results of the recount on Tuesday. I believe it was a fair process guided by rules. It was a citizen-led process conducted by local people with years of elections experience. And it was a transparent process conducted in public view. But my opponent didn't like the outcome. So he made an end run around the clear rules of the recount. And that was a violation of Virginia law. It was a violation of the terms of the court order that we had all, all agreed to. And it was contrary to state board of elections guidance. So at the end of the day, this really is about the integrity of elections in Virginia. And one of the interesting things in the motion that we have filed today is that really the court should not have reviewed the ballot in question. This really is a key principle guiding recounts because Without it, recounts would become a never-ending spiral of courtroom challenges. So thank you so much for, for being on this call. And, um, and you know, I, I know our lawyers will we'll get into the nitty-gritty of, of the motion that we're filing today. All right. Thank you so much, Delegate Oleg Simon. Um, I will let Jonathan Burke on and Ezra Reese of Perkins Cooley take it from here. Will people please mute their phones, please? Uh, sure. So, hi. Hi, all. This is Ezra Reese. Um, I'll give a brief overview, and then I'm sure my colleague Jonathan will want to jump in with a thought. Um, what we're filing today is called a motion for reconsideration. Um, it is uh, uh, circuit courts in Virginia have the power to reconsider uh, their decision. It's uh, especially common for them to do so when the initial decisions were made in a relatively quick basis and without the opportunity to review formal briefs. So what we're doing today is filing a more formal brief with the court, um, laying out in, as you can see, more formal fashion, uh, the arguments. Uh, the arguments are um, essentially extended, more formal versions of the ones we've made last Wednesday. Um, I think it mostly speaks for itself. Uh, we're making essentially three arguments. One, that the court made a mistake to consider the letter in the first place. Second, that the court made a mistake in opening that box of ballots and counting a ballot for the third time. Um, and third, that once they decided to do so, they made the wrong decision as of the disposition of that ballot, um, especially with regard to the State Board of Elections, and especially now that we know the State Board of Elections has indicated that there actually isn't um, any, any guidance in their own guidance, in their own handouts, um, that indicates that ballot uh, should have been counted for either. Um, I do want to point in particular to two arguments um, that, um, that we alluded to last Wednesday, but I think are, are in more formal fashion here. One is, um, this wasn't just a violation of the statute um, and the guidance. Uh, it was also a very clear violation of the, of the court's own order. And what is odd about that is it's particularly in violation of the reliance on the State Board of Election guidance and on the principle that, that the recount only recounts ballots in precincts one. Those were both pieces that the Yancey campaign counting was not including. Um, our initial draft did not include it. We actually drafted a relatively simple draft order, and counsel for uh, Delegate Yancey insisted on a much more formal order um, that specifically included those provisions. Um, so they, essentially they were, they were making sure that we were all as bound as possible um, by what they wanted the rules of the recount to be. And then uh, we think pretty clearly violated those rules once they realized they weren't working for them. Um, and the second thing I'd point you to is, um, and again, this is a, this is something we, we noted on last Wednesday, but we drew it out, drawn out in more formal fashion here. Um, this really does break the recount process of Virginia. This president is allowed to stand. It allows um, it allows candidates to come in after the fact, complain about things that were not properly brought up on election day. That is not only an unfair process, and believe me, we believe it's unfair. It's also fundamentally inaccurate because Virginia law is actually quite clear, quite consistent, and frankly, quite clever. Um, in laying out the process it does to make sure that when things are complained about, they're set aside um, so that you know they're not counted the first time. 
The problem with what the court did last Wednesday and the problem with the precedent that it creates for future recounts is that when you go back into those precincts and those ballots and start recounting individual ballots for the third time, it is a guarantee that at some point down the line you're going to introduce inaccuracy in the process because there just isn't a record of what that ballot was counted, um, how that ballot was counted um, the first time or the second time. And so we are really concerned not just what this means with this race, but also what it means for future races. And as you know, recounts are a relatively common occurrence in Virginia, right? There were four in the House of Delegates alone this year. Um, this is absolutely precedent that people will be uh, chewing over and debating in the future in recounts Virginia. It will absolutely come up again in a close race. Um, and we'd like the law to be set straight now, um, in part for this race, but in part for, uh, for all future recounts. Okay, thank you Any, very much, Ezra. Anything you wanted to add, Jonathan? No, I think that captures it all.